All right, let's take a look at the immune system. So we'll start off with all these science videos with a bunch of uh, questions, uh, and then those will help. These questions are going to be really the focus of the video. Um, so we want to know what B cell receptors are. We want to know the difference between cytotoxics and helper T cells. Um, what type of cells do NK cells attack or natural killer cells? Uh, the three types of granulocytes and their purpose. Uh, familiarity with uh, CD4 count, what that means. And then innate and adaptive immunity, which are the two major categories of immunity. All right, so we'll jump into that uh, innate and adaptive immunity here. But just for a quick uh, intro, uh, the immune system protects our bodies from pathogens. The organs of the immune system, which you do need to know, include lymph nodes, thymus, bone marrow, and spleen. All immature cells are born in the bone marrow. However, they can mature in different parts of the body. Okay, so as we look at adaptive and innate immunity, we'll look at adaptive first. Um, adaptive immunity is slower to activate. It specifically targets a pathogen and forms memory cells. B cells, T cells, and antibodies are part of the adaptive immunity. Innate immunity, on the other hand, is quick to respond, is not specific to individual pathogens, and it does not form memory cells. Uh, some examples of innate immunity are macrophages, natural killer cells, and the granulocytes. Okay, so that was, I believe, the last question, right? Yeah, compare and contrast innate and adaptive immunity. So you need to be able to be familiar with everything we just went over there. Uh, all of those can be parts of multiple choice questions. Uh, so let's look at cells of the innate immune system. Uh, we'll start with granulocytes. Uh, they contain reactive oxygen compounds and cytokines and include basophils, eosinophils, and neutrophils. Okay, so those are the three types of granulocytes. Um, and so as we go over them uh, briefly here, uh, basophils mediate allergic responses, eosinophils respond to parasitic infections, neutrophils release pro-inflammatory cytokines, and phagocytose, which means eat bacteria. Okay, so those are the functions of those. Uh, I believe there was a question um, on these granulocytes. Yep, there you go, fourth bullet point there. What are the three types of granulocytes and what is their purpose? You definitely want to be familiar with all three of them. Again, the basophils uh, mediate allergic reactions, eosinophils respond to parasitic infections, neutrophils release pro-inflammatory cytokines, and eat bacteria. Okay, moving on. Phagocyte. A phagocyte is a type of cell that has the ability to ingest foreign particles such as bacteria. It engulfs foreign bodies by extending its cytoplasm into pseudopods which are cytoplasmic extensions like feet surrounding the foreign particle and forming a vacuole. A monocyte is a type of immune cell made in the bone marrow and travels through the blood to tissues in the body where it becomes a macrophage or a dendritic cell. Monocytes kill extracellular pathogens. All right, we got two more on this page. Uh, macrophages. They are a type of monocyte. They are important cells of the immune system that are formed in response to an infection or accumulating damaged or dead cells. Macrophages are large, specialized cells that recognize, engulf, and destroy target cells. And then finally, we have here, it says NK cells or natural killer cells. Uh, they attack and kill cells that contain intracellular pathogens or display abnormal surface antigens. Uh, a good example of a natural killer cell would be a tumor cell. Okay, and then we had a question on uh, those natural killer cells. Okay, what we just said. What type of cells do natural killer cells attack? 
right? And they attack and kill cells that contain intercellular pathogens or display abnormal surface antigens. All right, moving on from the screen. Cells of the adaptive immune system. Uh, so we'll start with vaccines. Vaccines work by activating the adaptive immune system, leading to the formation of memory cells. Both memory T and B cells will be formed. Following secondary exposure, these cells will be quickly activated. This means that both B and T cells will be activated quickly. Memory B cells will produce antibodies, and memory T cells will kill infected cells and activate other immune cells. As we look at the T cells, they are born in uh, bone marrow and released into the bloodstream as immature lymphocytes. T cells mature in the thymus, differentiating into either helper or cytotoxic T cells. So let's look at what those are, right? Helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells. Helper T cells set off an alarm to warn the immune system that microbes have invaded the body's line of defense. Helper T cells do not directly kill infected cells. Let me say that again because that's really the important part to remember here. Helper T cells do not directly kill infected cells as cytotoxic T cells do. And we'll go over the cytotoxic T cells here in a second. Instead, they help activate cytotoxic T cells and macrophages to attack infected cells, or they stimulate B cells to secrete antibodies. Helper T cells become activated by interacting with antigen presenting cells, such as macrophages. Okay, and then we'll look at the cytotoxic T cell, and then I think we have a question on that too. Um, a cytotoxic T cell is a T lymphocyte, which just means it's a type of white blood cell that kills cancer cells. Okay, so again, cytotoxic T cells kills cancer cells. If you remember, just you know, like one minute ago, helper T cells do not directly kill infected cells. Okay, that's a big difference between those two. Cytotoxic T cells are stimulated by antigen and helper T cells. All right, hopefully this process is starting to make sense here with the helper T cells. Additionally, cytotoxic T cells kill body cells infected with pathogens by releasing perforin, which ruptures microbial membranes. Okay, question time. What is the difference between a cytotoxic and helper T cell? Okay, so we really just said it, right? But again, the helper T cell do not directly kill infected cells. Cytotoxic T cell kills cancer cells, as well as it will kill uh, cells that are infected um, with viruses or cells that are damaged by pathogens in other ways. So that's really the big difference there. And it's an important one. All right, B cells, which could also be called B lymphocytes, are a type of white blood cell. They function in the humoral immunity component of the adaptive immune system by secreting antibodies. Additionally, B cells present antigen and secrete cytokines. B cells Unlike the other two classes of lymphocytes, which are T cells and natural killer cells, express B cell receptors on their cell membranes. B cell receptors allow the B cell to bind to a specific antigen against which it will initiate an antibody response. Okay, B cell receptor, that's another important one. What is the function, the very first uh, bullet point here, what is the function of B cell receptors? Right, and what we had was B cell receptors allow the B cell to bind to a specific antigen. Again, another very common question about cells of the adaptive immune system. Okay, and we'll move on here. Okay, so we got a few more things uh, that are of importance to us. Uh, clonal selection is the fundamental mechanism in immunity. B and T lymphocytes bind to specific pathogenic molecules. Once they have been selected, these B and T lymphocytes make millions of copies of themselves. Uh, bone marrow is important for producing blood cells 
including those that attack infection in the bloodstream. However, you should know these cells do not prevent infections, such as bacteria, from entering the bloodstream. Uh, the CD4 count, we want to be familiar with this. The CD4 count is like a snapshot of how well your immune system is functioning. The CD4 cells are white blood cells that fight infection. Basically, the more you have, the better. These are the cells that the HIV virus kills. As HIV infection progresses, the number of these cells declines. When the CD4 count drops below 200 due to advanced HIV disease, a person is diagnosed with AIDS. A normal range for CD4 cells is about 500 to 1500. Okay, and I believe we have a CD4 count question. Yep, second to bottom, the fifth bullet point here. Would a CD4 count of 600 be considered healthy for an individual who does not have HIV? Okay, and as we go back again, right, the normal range for CD4 cells is about 500 to 1500. So it would be considered low, but it would still be within the range of uh, healthy. And then finally, uh, autoimmune disease. An autoimmune disease in involves the immune system attacking its own body tissue. That's really the sentence you care about. Common examples of autoimmune disease are multiple sclerosis, lupus, rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis, and type 1 diabetes. And that is all the stuff we need to know. And then as we kind of go back here, we've gone, we've gone through each of these uh, questions. And so now you should be able to answer these all yourself. If not, certainly feel free to go back through the video and get the answer again.